Hello. In this video, we are going to calculate the pH of a very dilute strong acid, specifically hydrochloric acid with a concentration of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. Because hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, in aqueous solution, it dissociates completely to form hydrogen ion, which would be equivalent to a hydronium ion, plus chloride. And this happens completely, so we write it with a single arrow. Because of that, we know that the concentration of H plus that is formed as a result of the dissociation of HCl, which we'll write this way, has to be exactly equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7 molar because there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the concentration of HCl and the concentration of hydrogen ion that comes from it. The other important reaction that is going on is the auto dissociation of the solvent to form hydrogen ion plus hydroxide ion. And we recall that the equilibrium constant expression for this is the concentration of H plus times the concentration of hydroxide, which is equal to the dissociation constant for water, which we call Kw, which has the value of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14. Now, it is important to note that in this equilibrium constant expression, this relationship is true whether we have a pure solution of water or we have other ingredients dissolved in the water. So that means that this H plus is actually the total amount of hydrogen ion in the solution. So let's write down the important relationship that the total amount of hydrogen ion present has two sources. One of the sources we saw already is from the strong acid, hydrochloric acid, or HCl. So we note that by putting a subscript of HCl, that's the hydrogen ion that came from HCl. But there's also some hydrogen ion that's going to come from the auto dissociation of the solvent, which I'll write as H2O being the subscript. Next, we want to assign a variable. So we're going to call this variable y. And the variable y we're going to set equal to the hydrogen ion that we get just from the dissociation of water. And the reason why we want to do that in this case is we know that there's also a one-to-one -one relationship between the amount of hydrogen ion that comes from water and the amount of hydroxide that comes from water. So this is also equal to the concentration of hydroxide, and we'll just put down the subscript of H2O. There's only one source of hydroxide here, but we'll put down H2O just to remind us that that's where we're getting that particular relationship. To solve, we are going to need to make two substitutions, which we're going to show consecutively. The first substitution is to substitute the value y for the concentration of H plus due to H2O into this expression for the total concentration of hydrogen ion. So we have H plus total is equal to the amount of hydrogen ion that came from the hydrochloric acid and then plus the hydrogen ion that came from water, which we've decided to call our variable y. Next, we want to substitute into the equilibrium constant expression, Kw. We have a relationship here for the total hydrogen ion concentration. So let's put that down first. So we have the concentration of H plus from the hydrochloric acid plus our variable Y. And then we have the concentration of hydroxide. 
But remember, that's also equal to the variable y. That's where that comes from. And this is all going to be equal to kw, which is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14 at 25 degrees centigrade. Next, we can apply the distributive law and basic algebraic techniques to convert this into the quadratic y squared plus the concentration of H plus due to HCl times y minus 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th, which is equal to zero. We also recall that in the problem, you were initially given the concentration of HCl, which is equal to the concentration of H plus that comes from it because hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. So that leads to the quadratic y squared plus 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7 times y plus 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th is equal to 0. We recognize a quadratic in a standard form where the coefficient a is equal to 1, b is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7th, b squared is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th. We get that by squaring b. And we know that since c is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th, the minus sign, very important, minus of course, uh, then for AC is equal to minus 4.0 times 10 to the minus 14th. Now we apply the quadratic formula. We get that Y is equal to negative B, which is minus, so minus 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7, plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th, minus 4ac, so minus a minus, so we have plus 4.0 times 10 to the minus 14th, and this is all divided by 2. Now to have a physical answer that's not unrealistic, we know that concentrations can never be negative, so we're going to be seeking out the solution y that gives us a positive value. So solving, we get that y is equal to 0 0.618 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. And this is the concentration of H plus that was formed from the dissociation of water. And point thing here to note is that if we had a pure solution of water with no acid present, then the concentration of H plus that would have been formed by the auto dissociation of water would have been 1 times 10 to the minus 7. That's what leads to the fact that the pH of a pure solution of water would be 7. So instead of 1.0, here we have 0 0.618. The auto ionization of water is somewhat suppressed due to the common ion H+. So here we see a specific example of the common ion effect having an effect um, on the acidity of a solution. They're not quite done because we realize that the total concentration of hydrogen ion was equal to the hydrogen ion that came from the acid plus the amount of hydrogen ion that came from the dissociation of the water solvent. Now we know that the first quantity was 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7 molar, because that is exactly the concentration of the strong acid. Strong acids dissociate completely, so we can make this assignment that the concentration of the acid is equal to the concentration of the H plus that comes from it. 
we've just derived that the concentration of H plus that comes from the dissociation of water is 0 0.618 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. Now, if we compare these quantities, we see that compared to the amount of acid uh, H plus that came from the acid, the amount that came from the dissociation of water is substantial. It's slightly more than half, but it's almost two thirds of the amount that came from the acid. So therefore, we cannot simply ignore it as we generally do if we simply have a dilute strong acid. So if we had an acid that was 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 molar, in those cases, we tend to simply ignore the amount of H plus that's generated from the dissociation of water. So if we add these together, we get that the concentration of H plus total is 1.618 times 10 to the minus seven molar. Finally, we recall that by definition, the pH is the negative log of the concentration of H plus. That's the total amount of H plus. So the pH would be the negative log of 1.618 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. And when we compute this, the value we get is 6.79. So note that it's slightly lower than 7 because we have a slightly acidic solution, but it's only a slight decrease. So I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.